Hi. Hi, good morning all. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Paul Jastra, Head of Digital Transformation for Teleperformance Simia. Um, I have more than 10 years experience in digital transformation. I have a background in IT, innovation, and Lean Six Sigma. And um, I help companies to deliver effortless customer experience through digital solutions like NLP bots, messaging channel implementations, and advanced analytics. So today's session, and thanks for joining. I really see a large audience, and it's great to see you guys all here. Today's session is about two major trends we see in our BPO customer experience industry. The first one is the transition from voice to digital. And the second one is the migration from brick and mortar to work at home. And I'm proud to be joined by this session and by our expert from our partner Twilio, Bruno Babali. Bruno, over to you. Hello, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you so much for hosting me today. And thank you, everybody, for joining. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to be together. I'm Bruno Barbagli. I'm Teleperformance Global Account Manager uh, at Twilio, in charge of the global relationship with uh, Teleperformance. And um, today, we have prepared something for you to share, to start sharing before we go into the conversation, which is some figures which are quite interesting from what we call the State of the Customer Engagement Report 2021 that we do at Twilio every year which has been just released in February. And this report is pretty interesting because it brings new insight about uh, interviews that we have been conducting with 2,500 global enterprise customers at Twilio with Decision Maker. Nice. And what we, yeah, which is pretty a, a nice uh, set of, of customers. Um, what we discover is that definitely trends that emerge and we'll discuss later uh, last year are here to last. We're not getting back to a kind of a pre-pandemic. This is the new normal. And 33% uh, of the organization we have been uh, having a conversation are saying that potentially without changing the customer engagement, they would have lost revenue, competitiveness, and also not meeting customer expectation, which is at the end is impacting their activity. And what is key in the trend that we have seen from this organization is that 87% of those businesses report that digital communication have been really key to survive to the pandemic. And what they realized, and uh, we'll go through that with some very specific examples with Paul, is that the number of channels that are made available is increasing from traditional voice, email, and SMS. Organizations have been adding channels such chat, chatbots, IVR, video, and they also realized that the time to deploy those channels is really decreasing by 46% thanks to technology nice. and these practices. And uh, the, the lastly, I would say is that it's just a start because 95% of them are just saying we'll continue expanding the communication channel offering. So that's where we are uh, today. And this is what we wanted to share. And uh, I think Paul will make available the report at the end of the chat session uh, later on. Yeah. yeah, we will submit a link and everybody will have access to the report. Thanks for sharing yeah. those facts, sir, Bruno. It's really interesting. Yeah, so let, let's get into very specific now with uh, the performance and how the COVID experience and what happened has been an, a digital accelerator on the transformation. Could you share a bit of the context where you were a year ago and which were your findings? Yeah, yeah actually, it's actually a year ago when we, you know, this COVID tried to start to hit us in Semia. And, you know, during the pandemic, in the beginning, we started a huge increase in volumes. So we saw about some verticals like retail, e-commerce, and like, like more than 300% increase of volume. So it was massive. As of such, we had some challenges, I would say, to keep up the service level, uh, to, to pick up the calls that were incoming. So to help our clients handle those volume surges, you know, we, um, we implemented solutions like voice to messaging. So deflecting a synchronous phone call to an asynchronous digital conversation. Uh, and we did that you know, to, to maintain business continuity. And it was also easier to bring those digital conversations to an agent's home instead of a, a phone call because we didn't have the capacity at that time to, to make the transition from, from brick and mortar to home offices. Um, yeah. So exactly. But maybe on top of that, so what we also see that agents are working from home, um, and that's also why we are partnering up with Twilio to scale that up. You know, we have now more than two hundred thousand agents working from home every day. So to make it available and to ensure that you have the capacity and the bandwidth, you know, we we needed the solution like Twilio to have the scale and the globalization. I think what you're saying, Paul, here is really responding to the customer expectation from being engaged, but also responding to how people are work, agents are working from their homes and they have to manage also those customer engagements. Exactly, exactly. 
So recently, we have deployed our, or published our report, which is a Teleperformance Global Customer Experience Lab. So we do a yearly research about more than 50,000 respondents across the globe, so end customers, consumers, in different countries, in different verticals. And what we see there is that, you know, the increased contact rate in most of the countries is, is more than, you know, is, is really high. So especially the millennials and Generation Z, they were seeing an increase, increase in the contact rate of about 15%, which means those people are contacting more and more customer service, especially now during the pandemic, if you compare it to before. And also, like you mentioned before as well, Bruno, that we see that shift from voice and email to instant messaging and social channels, that has a growth of 45%. So that combined is, you know, is of course for us, it, the voices are increasing, but also shifting towards other channels. And, you know, it's uh, for us, it was really uh, uh, required to step up and to, you know, to, to ensure that we can deliver those, those, those conversations from our, from our agents. Yeah. So, and I think that this is really how the two studies that we're putting here together are going into the same direction, which is great to hear. Yeah. So maybe Bruno, to, to you. So because we work together now quite a while. So what's your view <laughs> of the role of TP, you know, on responding into this pandemic? Yeah, I think that it was really amazing how teleperformance has been kind of uh, taking into uh, the lead into what happened and which has been impacting everybody. And uh, we started a conversation almost the, same, the, the very first week of the pandemic where kind of how do we can cope and tackle this kind of communication challenge. And I think that has been very interesting to see teleperformance teams starting to explore how to respond to these customer challenges in bringing solutions, bringing that innovation, but also, as you said, uh, shifting the way that agents are supporting. So I think that from the, the Twilio perspective, see, looking from outside teleperformance, we, we saw this kind of great relationship that you have with your customers, which is either partnering with you to ask you for innovation or bringing solution that they expect from you. And this is something very unique approach and uh, it happened very quickly, taking into account of what we were kind of all going through. That's uh, pretty impressive. Okay, thanks. And I think that's uh, um, what uh, struck me from that kind of uh, insight from the very beginning of the pandemic is this kind of how you engage with customers and how you go into building solutions that are fitting your customer expectation or are trying to meet and exceed the customer expectation. Could you share a little bit of how you elaborate, you co-construct with your clients? Yeah, yeah, sure. So maybe I have some use case that I'm, that I'm allowed to share. So for instance, you know, the first use case that we had was actually exactly a year ago, I think, with us as Samsung. So we have mm -hmm. an innovation partnership with Samsung and, you know, to help them to respond to this COVID situation, we partner up with Twilio and we, we implemented the solution which we call voice to messaging. So I, yeah. like I mentioned before, we've deflected voice to WhatsApp. Uh, I think we did it in two weeks. Um, we, 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 developed the solution, we implemented, we trained our agents, and we went live within two weeks. Because like I mentioned, people were working from home and sometimes there were some challenges in bandwidth, et cetera. So it was easier to bring a digital channel like WhatsApp to our agents' home to support the customers than to bring uh, to bring voice. So what we have realized is about, you know, currently we, where we have the, the last year results, overall we see a 20% deflection of phone calls to WhatsApp. Oh. Yeah, and then on top of it, because it is a digital channel. So we have a AI digital assistant on top mm -hmm. of that WhatsApp channel, and that is automating 90% of those incoming conversations. So that's not only saving cost tremendously, but also improving the MPS by about 5%. So it's a win-win for the customer, for our client, and also, of course, for TP to, uh, to have those KPIs. Yeah, which is pretty impressive, I think, that the results, but also the way and the time that has been required that we, we co-develop it together in, in putting this into the, the Samsung hands. And I think that maybe there is another customer that is more about the conversational, but if with another kind of uh, seal in EMEA, I think you have another yeah. case to share with the audience. Yeah, so this is the, the other one that I wanted to share is some of the largest telcos that we have in, in Semia. So for this client, we had a manual outbound process to, to validate if the technical issue of the customer was resolved. So we were doing callbacks you know, for about 50% mm -hmm. of the calls. You did a callback, like a kind of courtesy call. And um, however, 70% um, of those callbacks were obsolete because the issue was actually resolved. Yeah. So, so for 50% of the inbound calls, we did a callback, and those callbacks, 70% of them were obsolete, they actually were raised. So what we did, together with your help, 
we implemented a solution to send an automated SMS to the customer using a bot as well to, to send SMS, hey, dear customer, issue, issue, resolved, yes or no. And if the customer said yes, okay, case closed. If the customer says no, okay, then we do a callback. So yeah. we reduce the manual work significantly and also we optimize the MPS because we did it instantly. So I think this is a great other example where we also improved MPS and CSET and also reduced our, our cost and uh, our handling time. Thank you for sharing those uh, conversational examples that were very interesting, I think helpful for the audience. Yeah, and I think I would like to mention that we are now offering those kinds of solutions with our with global partners. So we are now globalizing this partnership with Trilio and Coros. So to implement Trilio and Coros together for solutions like voice to messaging, AI chatbots, etc., we are now serving our, our global clients. And it's really, really, it's really a great pleasure to to work with you guys together. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I think that uh, what I can share with you uh, is also the, some of the traditional channels around voice, yeah. which is what we're seeing uh, with you guys. Uh, we have deployed two customers, one recently in the Middle East region on the real estate, where basically it was a customer requesting traditional voice, but we got this deployed in a few days through your teams. And it's now kind of 1.3 thousand um, hours per month, which are supporting uh, many, many calls that are all kind of outbound calls that this company wanted to deploy quickly, also as a response to the way that people need to reach out. So that was a very interesting way to really deliver quickly, time to deploy over a week and thousands of calls. And uh, just when a uh, last one, which is uh, in North America, which is uh, a company in the retail that has to take care of their customers and employees during the pandemic. So they had to shut down stores, a massive number of stores, and they go up and down with the different lockdowns. And we provided, just to give you a number, between 4.7 million minutes with you guys, 8 million per month between April and May, just to handle the deflection from store to online and be sustainable in the business. So this is a great yeah. way to deliver voice without capacity uh, planning. Exactly. And that's a great example. And I see you know, those kind of retail closures is, of course, happening in the entire world, right? So due to lockdown. So I think this is a great solution, which is, could be relevant for a lot of our listeners today. Absolutely. So uh, before we go to the, the conclusion, maybe a few words about uh, what would be from the tech performance side, the trends that we're seeing in this new normal, because we're just at the beginning. As we said, we're not getting back. So what do you see that from what's in front of us and we're going to work together and with our customers? Okay, yeah. So I see, we see five main trends and I would try, try to explain them one by one. So first we see self-service. We see mm -hmm. a big increase in our clients that ask, okay, do you have a solution for self-service? And also customers, they want to resolve their issue themselves. So offering self-service is number one. Number two, what we see is relationship. So our advisors, they really are focused on empathy, on the emotional side, you know, the high touch. So relationship focus is number two, which is, is important. That will be more and more important into this pandemic. Then number three is data analysis. So having the data, doing interaction analytics on the data and having insights and give that feedback also back to our agents and to our clients, those insights. So it is, it's essential to have a proper data analytics team within your organization. Then number four, and I think we mentioned it several times, it is the pivot to digital. So the shift from, from voice to digital and from synchronous to asynchronous. And there was a lot of um, uh, material around that. And number five, I think it's one of the most important ones is simplicity. So make it simple for your customers. So do not hide the, 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 the option to contact you as a brand. Do not hide the phone number from your website. Make it simple for them to contact you and resolve it fast and accurate. And then for sure, you know, the customers will come back and will keep coming back to you as a brand. Yeah, I think that what you're saying is basically that the customers are of our clients have yes. discovered a definitely new way of being interacting with their brands. And now they just want to go beyond that experience and get much more personal and, and what you do explain. That's great, great insight from uh, the performance side. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. And any uh, from from your perspective, Bruno. So, what is the what is the benefit for for our clients of this partnership with TP and Twilio? Yeah, I think that today is also uh, an important day because we're kind of telling the market that we're going with this partnership. So that's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a very nice and good news to share. And I think it's a pretty unique approach about this partnership about what we want to deliver with two global players. Uh, 
We have 200,000 customers globally who have been into the customer engagement for years. And now we're partnering with you with a massive footprint uh, of the world. So I think it's really about how do we make this simple? Uh, the technology side, the, the process side, the people side, and it's kind of a one-stop shop that we're kind of uh, proposing to our clients with this partnership, which is either operating globally, regionally, or locally. So it's up to, to, to them. And I think that is really bringing state-of-the-art uh, technology with deep expertise on customer engagement and processes from your side. And this is unique. Uh, we're two unique companies, two leaders. And uh, our goal is to really to put the best technology to change and impact the people's life and also our customer businesses and how we, we bring great people with great technology and great processes. So I think it's really a, a business outcome mindset here. Yeah, yeah okay, I fully agree with you. If you want to conclude on your side about uh, how you see that from play performance on this point. Yeah, so it's an honor to partner up at Twilio. You know, I think we do a great job together already, and I'm looking forward to 2021 because I see a lot of more opportunities are coming up. I see also a large audience now listening, so I think this is an interesting session. Um, and I'm really looking forward to 2021. So maybe to, to summarize, I think the shift from brick and mortar to work at home, and also the shift from uh, voice and phone synchronous to a digital channel for both, I think this is a the true partnership. And um, I'm, you know, I'm, I think we are well positioned for this. And I want to summarize also that we will share the links of both of the surveys, both from Twilio and from Teleperformance will be shared into this uh, into the session so everybody can have a quick read and of course if you want to have more insights let me know let Bruno know so we can we can help you as well to to get this result thank you very much thank, thank you very you much, very much for listening bye-bye thank you bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.